thank you. This is going to be a very like personal, motivational kind of speak, nothing technical because that was already covered by Agustin here. So, um, well, my name is Diego. Um, I am a computer programmer from Costa Rica, but I currently live in Germany, in Munich. And um, so I, I feel very excited about this talk um, because I actually feel very excited about this topic and you will see why. Um, and so, and I really hope I can share some of this same enthusiasm to, to you all. Uh, okay, so let me start by talking about beautiful things. So I'm reading this book by uh, Maria Popova, which is a blogger from New York City. I highly recommend it. I'm a big, big fan of her site. It's called Figuring. And uh, in Figuring, it's a beautiful book that explores the intersection of mathematics, science, and art. And around chapter two or so, she talks about Maria Mitchell, which is an astronomer. And uh, there's one part of the text that I really, it really captured my mind. And I'm just going to read it uh, real quickly here that it says like, sometimes I ask myself whether I would be studying galaxies if they were ugly. I think it may not be irrelevant that galaxies are very attractive. And when I read this, it really captured my mind. Like she actually saw a deep beauty in this. So for her, it was not, it was, it was even fundamental that galaxies were beautiful and this gives her the power to study. So I thought this is really powerful idea. And it was also powerful to me because I, I love beauty, I love beautiful things, beautiful concepts, inspiring creations, elegant simplicity, owing complexity. And the thing is like, you can find beauty in so many things, like from, you know, art, science, technology, philosophy, history, you name it. But the thing is like, we don't have that much time. So I can only pick two. And the two things that I like the most are like computers and, you know, like graphics art. And the thing is, like, I, I love art since I, was, since I was, like, very little. You know, like, I used to sketch in elementary school, and I illustrated my own comic books, like, when, when a friend, when I was nine. And, and I still, like, love writing and doing things like that when I get a chance. But then I discovered computers when I was, like, 12. And, like, yeah, this, this like, silicon thing with wires, which doesn't even know it exists, it, it captures me. Like, shit. I, I fell in love with the machine. Uh, I felt I, I did not know how to use it, but like I, I loved turning it apart. And, and then I ended up having these two separate things like arts and computers. And at that point, I did not really know how to put the two things together. And then I entered university. So I, I first thing I started was electrical engineering. So, I, you know, like you have to take some calculus classes and things like that. And you know, you, you, you see all the technical, mathematical things. And I was still striking to find beauty. And the thing is, I, I found it. Like, the first thing that I saw is like, well, in calculus, you see these uh, polar coordinates. And uh, despite all the test technical aspects of it, I saw so much beauty in it. And uh, so there's, there's things like um, these, these are called like rose uh, plots. And these are really appealing to see. So I was starting to see, uh, you know, this kind of um, beauty again. And then I had computers. Uh, and then I, I saw this, um, this talk about this uh, Dr. Jim Gates, who's a physicist. And he said, like, a computer is an instrument in which mathematics is played. And then I thought, okay, so there's all this beauty in mathematics and there's this computer. So there has to be a way to put those two things together, right? It's just that I did not know how yet. And then I was striking like to, you know, I, I got lots of computers and I got my master's in computer science and I worked in computers for many years in the industry and all that stuff. And like all the art was like left aside and I, I was never able to like put these two things together until, until this year more or less. Like, uh, so this year everything changed and uh, yeah, that's a, a picture of like uh, where I was sitting in the Ricker Center in Brooklyn. Like also my, my, my favorite place, like next to the window. And then so, so everything changed and I feel so excited to tell you what happened. So at the beginning of this year, I had the opportunity to attend a retreat for programmers in Brooklyn, New York City. And it was truly one of the most beautiful experiences in my life. And it totally changed the way I see arts and computers forever. So uh, yeah, 
So for this retreat, uh, you're supposed to come up with your own project, right? So I had this uh, functional program in language, blah, 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 which I was develop developing. And I was like working for that like for months before going to RC. But then on the first day, I was introduced to this super really nice guy, Agustin, who's actually sitting over there. Yeah. And uh, they told me like, oh, Agustin is really into creative computing. And I thought like, what is, what is creative computing? Like maybe, maybe I heard about it, but I was like never really into it. And, uh, and the thing is like, it, it suddenly clicked, you know, in my head, like, I think this is something I should really get into. And it turns out like Agustin was more than happy to teach me about it. So I was only in the mini batch. So I was only there for one week, but it was like a super good week for me. Um, so like I said, so my original plan was to do this functional programming thing. And I really want to do my functional programming and compiler, but then I thought like, but I really want to do this art as well. So what happened? Well, I ended up fusing the two things together. Like this, these pictures we see here, those are actually the, the product of like uh, putting together some OpenGL bindings with my programming language. So I was able to create these things with what Agustin teach me. And, um, and, and, and I really liked it. So um, this image here to the, what's this, like, to the left is a uh, Barsley fern fractal, which is a fractal that resembles a spleen work. And then the images to the right are like random walks, like using some Brownian motion. And then it, this was like kind of cool. How do I, oh wait. And, and then, but, but that I did like using my own programming language, which is not that effective. So I thought, well, I'm a C++ programmer. So what else can you do with C++? And then like Agustin introduced me to Open Frameworks, which is a super cool uh, C++ framework that you can do, you can use for creative computation. So this is just like one of my experiments that I did uh, during that week. And I, and I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, but there are other frameworks like in Java and things like this. And um, so this is just one of the things. And then I thought like, okay, now, now I have the tools. So what kind of beautiful things can I do with these tools that I have? Well, it turns out like lots of beautiful things like these shapes here are, are called like cipher graphs, which is just a geometric drawing that uh, produces some mathematical roulette curves. So this you can also do. And then I thought like, what about the things that I learned in school? Well, it turns out like, as an uh, electrical engineer, you study lots of noise. And the thing is, like in electrical engineering, noise is often associated with something that is undesirable, and something undesirable added to the signals. However, uh, I, I just remember, like, well, you know, like noise can also be quite beautiful. And there are many different types of noise and colors of noise, like white noise, gray noise. And there's a special kind of noise called purling noise, which was uh, introduced by Ken Perling in the 80s. And uh, so it gives you like random values such that the values that are like close to each other are like not so different from each other, so it's smooth. And so you can like do some pretty cool things like this over here using Perling noise. What else can you do? So for many years, I worked in uh, compilers, you know, like formal grammars and all that stuff. So guess what? Like you can also do pretty cool things with formal grammars. So there's these uh, things called Lindermeyer systems which allows you to generate like visually organic appealing things using these kinds of grammars. And uh, also uh, creating uh, arts with computer is not something new. I mean, it's new to me because I just discovered it, but it has been there for quite a while. So for instance, this uh, picture is going, it's called Drawing Machine by Desmond Paul Hendrick back from the 1960s. And there have been many creations uh, using old technologies to newer technologies. So there are things like um, uh, machine learning, which you can also use to create art. So uh, this that we're seeing here, it's a style transfer from Munch the Scream applied to uh, Jimmy Wales, uh, Wikipedia founder, uh, using some like deep, deep neural network technology. So deep neural network is like computationally expensive and perhaps difficult to explain. However, there are simpler things that can be done using like a clustering and classification and things like that. And you can still get like super appealing results with that, which is like quite amazing. And I really want to get into that. And uh, hmm, so it's eight minutes and 57 seconds, which is quite nice because this is the last slide. And so my intention in this talk was to get you excited, perhaps as excited as I am. And uh, I hope I was successful in doing that. I briefly touched some of the things that, uh, that you can do. Um, 
and also just wanted to remind you, like my, my friend Agustin and Isabel, we were planning to do this small workshop. So in case you're interested, we might, you know, approach to us. And this was it. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>